so first of all, uh, the first season of Loki is the most watched, you know, Marvel show on Disney Plus. So congratulations, because it means it was extraordinary, and I agree. But I want to ask you if this result kind of had an impact in the making of the season two, or just on the stress you have to face, you know, now that <laughs> season two is uh, it's out. I think I think uh, it's a one. It's we're very lucky. It's like because it was so well well embraced, it gave us a tremendous amount of freedom. I think there's a lot of weird ideas in that first season that fans could have just fully rejected, and they were embraced. And so I think for us that was like, okay, we can we can go further with this. We can dive deeper into this world. I'm sure people are going to want to see more of the TVA. We can show that. Like it really felt like it allowed us to build out our world and our story. Yeah, and in the show you kind of really expand, we can say, the universe that that we, we know, so it was really a challenge. But I want to ask you something, because we have uh, even the growth, you know, Loki as a character, but if there is something that you, that for you, for the team, has to be truthful, you know, to Loki, to the character, no matter what. I, I think that's, for, for us, you know, it, it, as you say, like, you're seeing this world grow out. I, I think Loki and then obviously all of our characters have to be the central focus of this story for it to be interesting or to work. So the thing with Loki has been so much of season one was defined by it being a really a, a show about identity. Who are you? What's your place? How do you fit in? Uh, and, and, and season two kind of expands on that. And, and not only is it a continued search for him to find himself, I think it's a big part of it is about him trying to become the best version of himself, but also how do you define that? And so much of that could be defined by uh, who the connections you make. And, and that's how sort of our, uh, our, our very Wizard of Oz-like uh, connections among ca amongst characters kind of comes into focus and, and the reason why this is such an ensemble. Yeah, I want to ask you something about the quality of the visual because this show is getting better and better. It is extraordinary, so congratulations to Thank all you. of you. But I want to ask you if there is some challenge, you know, in trying to make this show really cinematic, because I'm always imagining some, someone on the bed with a smartphone, you know, watching it. So I want to ask you something about this. Which, which are the challenges? You have to, you, you have to prioritize it. It was something that we set out in, in, in season one of Loki. Uh, it, we wanted to build sets. We wanted to allow the, our cinematographer to have time to to really make it, to light these shows and make them look beautiful. We needed to kind of give Christine Watt, our costume designer, the, the room to build these really beautiful costumes in this world. You, you have to prioritize it, certainly. And sometimes that just means adjusting schedule so that things can be built. Uh, it doesn't, it usually in our world, doesn't mean more money because we're moving at a certain schedule. The money is what the money is. Right. And so it's, it's a lot of times about creative flexibility, building schedules so that you can do that, uh, allowing those departments to kind of take the time and give them the heads up so that they can build these things. And, and like that's exciting because I do think it was rewarding to put all of that effort in in season one and to see so many people call it out. Uh, and also it just helps us shoot faster. When you've got sets uh, and, and the, the, it, it helps the cast, it helps the, the, uh, the entire camera department, they can point the camera anywhere and it's gonna look interesting. So it, it's, it's helpful, but it's also something that we wanted to, to do.